Hello, thanks for joining us today. We're here today to talk about legislation to remove the antitrust exemption that's long been enjoyed by Major League Baseball. It's important to remember that this exemption was created from whole cloth by the Supreme Court 99 years ago. In an opinion authored by Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes, Jr., the Supreme Court said that Major League Baseball simply would not be covered by our antitrust laws. That means that this exemption never saw the light of day in Congress. It was not put in place legislatively. It is a distinctively legislative decision. It's not a ruling that it enjoys any support either from the statutory text or anything in the Constitution. We have to remember the reason we have antitrust laws to begin with. We have them because we want to protect com competition. Competition is good because we found over time that competition tends to bring down prices and it tends to increase quality. When we allow people to collude, to engage in activity to enhance and perpetuate their own market dominance and defend their own monopolistic position, competition itself suffers and especially consumers suffer. So if we are going to deviate from the norm established by our antitrust laws, those deviations need to be considered and carefully weighed and balanced and, and they need to be ultimately enacted by Congress, not simply put in place by the Supreme Court. Now, yes, this is precedent. It's precedent that has been in place since 1922. But it's not precedent that we're powerless to address. In fact, we have the ability uh, uh, through legislation to undo it, and that's precisely what we're doing. There's no reason that Major League Baseball should be treated any differently than any other professional sports leagues in America. Uh, no reason why they ought to have preferential treatment relative to uh, the NFL or the NBA or any other professional athletic organization. Nor is there, to my knowledge, any decent argument why baseball is itself different from any of those other sports or why uh, Major League Baseball should enjoy exemptions not held by other corporations generally, regardless of whether they have anything to do with professional sports. This is good legislation. This is the type of legislative housekeeping that we need to undertake from time to time, especially when we discover that the Supreme Court of the United States has impermissibly stepped into the legislative thicket. That's our job, and our job is ultimately about protecting competition. I'm grateful to be joined uh, uh, by my two friends and colleagues, Senator Cruz from Texas and Senator Hawley from Missouri. We will now hear from them in that order. Thank you, Mike. This last month has seen a significant and indeed a dramatic change in our country and not a change for the good. This past month we have seen the rise of the woke corporation. We have seen the rise of big business enforcing a woke standard. It's always been the case that big business wants to get in bed with big government. It's always been the case that big business seeks handouts, seeks subsidies, seeks special benefits at the expense of the little guy, at the expense of the small business. But in the past month, these woke corporations have decided to become the political enforcer for Democrats in Washington. They've made the decision to get in bed even at the price of spreading disinformation. What prompted this legislation being introduced was Major League Baseball's decision to pull the All-Star game out of Atlanta, Georgia. It did so based on a pile of lies. It did so based on an assertion that legislation the Georgia legislature took up to protect voter integrity somehow disenfranchised Georgia voters. That is demonstrably false. The legislation Georgia passed expanded early voting in Georgia. It also required identification to vote. I would note, Major League Baseball, if you go to a game right now and pick up your tickets at the will call uh, ticket booth, they'll ask you for identification to vote. So Major League Baseball understands the value of identification, and they apparently don't think they're being bigoted racist when they ask you for a driver's license to pick up your tickets. But they decided to play politics with voting and elections in Georgia. Joe Biden 
similarly spread partisan lies about the Georgia law, so much so that the Washington Post, hardly a white right-wing outlet, the Washington Post predictably leans left, predictably leans Democratic. The Washington Post fact-checked Joe Biden on the Georgia law and gave him four Pinocchios, their worst rating for spreading partisan lies about it. And Major League Baseball's decision is indefensible on the merits. They made a decision to pull the All-Star game out of a city that is 51% African American and move it to Denver, a city that is 9% African American. I would note also that the new Georgia law gives Georgia voters two more days of early voting than Denver allows. This was not about voting. This was about virtue signaling and this was about punishment. Major League Baseball made the decision that the more than half of its fans who happen to be Republicans are now disfavored and that voting, voter fraud is not a concern legislatures should focus on. That decision was harmful. It's going to hurt baseball. But it also underscores that there's no reason Major League Baseball should enjoy special subsidies corporate welfare that no one else gets. As Mike Lee explained, Major League Baseball has had an exemption from the antitrust laws for nearly a hundred years. It was made up by the U.S. Supreme Court. It's been in effect nearly a hundred years. The other major sports leagues don't enjoy that exception. The NFL doesn't have that exception. The NBA doesn't have that exception. Somehow those sports leagues managed to do just fine, but baseball gets this very special carve-out of corporate welfare from Washington. They don't have to play by the same rules everybody else does, and we're standing here today to say Major League Baseball should have to play by the same rules, and if they're going to play partisan enforcer, they shouldn't expect to see special goodies from Washington when they are dishonestly acting to favor one party against the other and doing so in a way that is hurting thousands of small businesses in the city of Atlanta, many of which are owned by African Americans, thousands of African American workers in the city of Atlanta who are hurt by Major League Baseball's woke, dishonest decision that we're standing against. Senator Hall. Thank you very much. You know, I, I think the last few weeks have made something very clear that has always been true in American history, and that is monopoly and liberty do not go together. Monopoly is the enemy of the people's freedom. That's certainly true of Major League Baseball, it's true of Big Tech, it's true of the monopolies that we see more and more across our economy. When you have concentrations of economic power, political power follows. Now we've seen this before in American history. I mean, this is not unfamiliar to us. A century ago, Massive corporations, the railroads, U.S. Steel, attempted to amass economic power and succeeded. They attempted to amass political power and for a time succeeded. And we know what the solution to that is. The solution is you break them up. The solution is trust busting. And that's exactly what needs to occur today. This is about preserving the ability of the democratic process to go forward. The fact that Major League Baseball would get together and try to punish a state because the elected representatives of that state and the elected governor of that state settled on a law to preserve election integrity is unbelievable. But of course, Major League Baseball is not the only one. We had news just this past weekend that a hundred CEOs of the largest corporations in the world met together to talk about how they are going to launch some sort of plan to influence other states across the country. This is exactly what the railroad barons tried to do a century ago. It's exactly the same thing. It's trying to control the democratic process. It's trying to leverage economic power to exert political influence. It's trying to push forward a particular political and ideological agenda. And the answer to this now is the same as the answer a century ago. You gotta break them up. So it's time for a new round of trust busting in the United States. Major League Baseball is a great place to start. This is why I support Senator Lee's legislation. Proud to join him and Senator Cruz on it. It's time that we sent a clear signal that first of all, there shouldn't be these dramatic carve-outs in our antitrust laws, like the one the Supreme Court made up for Major League Baseball. And it's also time that we sent the signal 
that uh, no corporation is above the law, that no corporation should be able to be a power in a state unto itself, whether we're talking about Major League Baseball or whether we're talking about big tech or big pharma or big banks. All of these corporations exist to serve our democracy, the people of the United States, and ultimately competition, free, open competition is the guarantor of liberty, it's what protects the people's liberty, it's what protects our democratic process, and we've got, to, we've got to act now to ensure that there is that free, robust competition again in all sectors of our economy, and Major League Baseball is a great place to start. I'm delighted to join this legislation. Questions? I look forward to the support uh, uh, from all of our Democratic colleagues for our bill getting rid of the unfair antitrust exemption enjoyed by Major League Baseball. Look, it, uh, when they acted this way, uh, when they made this announcement about the All-Star game, uh, my immediate thought was th this is the behavior of a monopolist. When a monopolist behaves in certain ways, you start to ask questions. When we, when we see uh, anti-competitive behaviors of one sort or another, when you see one actor dominating a particular field in a way that makes you feel uncomfortable, when you look at some of the actions of companies in the tech sector, for example, like Apple and Facebook and Google, when you look at that, sometimes you ask yourself the question, why? Why are they doing this? Why would they insult half of their customer base? Why would they alienate this or that entity with, uh, with whom they've contracted? Uh, very often, uh, when we're dealing with an antitrust issue, the answer lies in monopoly status. Very often, it exists in the fact that if you can get away with something, uh, if you can maintain monopolistic control over an industry, uh, then that empowers you to do that. It makes you feel emboldened because you lack competition. That's exactly what happened here. That's why the first question I asked myself is, why would they do this? Why would they enter into the contract with the city of Atlanta? Why would they decide to do that and alienate that many of their viewers? They lack competition. And they've enjoyed that lack of competition for 99 years due to a judicial mistake. But it's a judicial mistake we can correct and we intend to do so. Yep. Going out of the NFL, NBA, NHL have protection. They also don't have any leagues that rival them in, in the marketplace on that same level. Is the expectation that this would allow a rival league to spring up, or is it more meant as a symbolic gesture? And yeah. as a matter of all, you know, you're coming to state with two major league baseball teams. What's what's the expectation that this would mean for those teams in San Francisco? Okay. The short answer to the question, your question is, it's not done with the expectation or a desire to achieve a particular outcome in the marketplace. Whether or not some competitor springs up is entirely up to the marketplace and anyone uh, potentially willing to pursue that sort of a thing. So I, 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 I neither know uh, whether that will be the outcome, nor do I have a, a, a strong opinion about whether it should or will occur. My point here is that uh, of all of the factors that one should consider uh, when deciding whether to form a league of any kind, you ought not have to stop and think about the fact that an existing market incumbent will be able to collude against any upstarts and engage in other behavior that would otherwise violate antitrust laws because of some kind of exemption. I would say, Brian, I think that when you look at this, sure. When you look at this, as you rightly point out, the other major sports leagues don't have this exception for the antitrust laws. So what it really amounts to for Major League Baseball is a huge subsidy. You know, Senator Cruz mentioned this. I mean, the, the carve-out really represents government funding of Major League Baseball in a way that the NFL, the NHL, the NBA don't get and don't have. So this isn't about being anti-baseball. It is about being pro-fairness, pro-competition. And it's about being anti-monopoly. And there's no reason why baseball should enjoy special subsidies from this government and the American taxpayer when Congress has never voted on it, no American president's ever signed it, the Supreme Court invented it, 
the league is effectively being subsidized with taxpayer dollars in a way that no other league is. Why should they have that special carve out and get those special subsidies? And I think their behavior now, this monopolist behavior that Senator Lee's talking about, really brings this issue to the fore. I mean, this is, this is a league that increasingly wants to exert political influence and at the same time wants to get government handouts and government subsidies. They just can't have it both ways. Well, and I, let me point out also, you brought up both football and basketball. At various periods in history, both football and basketball have had rival leagues. That is always a potential. That is a check on behavior in the marketplace. And when it comes to Major League Baseball's exemption from the antitrust laws, that's a special benefit only baseball gets that nobody else gets. It's not just the existence of rival leagues. It's anti-competitive behavior that baseball is allowed to carry out. And, and that is a special subsidy. It is corporate welfare coming from Washington. And in this instance, Major League Baseball is behaving with arrogance. You know, I thought Senator Lee actually pointed it out very well. It's the arrogance of a monopolist. It's the arrogance that they're counting on the fact that their fans have nowhere to go. Listen, I'm a big Houston Astros fan. I'm happy to cheer on the Rangers as well, but I love my Astros. I'll tell you, there are a lot of baseball fans I know of who are pissed off at this move, but at the same time don't necessarily want to turn off the TV and stop watching sports. And the monopoly power they have, they're counting on the fact that their customers are stuck, that they can't go anywhere. Well, they should play by the same rules everyone else should, and they should stop engaging in dishonest politics. This woke corporate America is based on lies. It's based on being conscripted in to the Democrats' effort to pass H.R. 1, the Corrupt Politicians Act. This is about seizing control of democracy so that only Democrats can be elected. And, and corporate America is, is willingly going along with that. That is contrary to the interest of a whole lot of customers. It's contrary to the interest of a whole lot of employees. It's contrary to the interest of a whole lot of shareholders. And it's contrary to the interest of a free and fair democracy, which right now Major League Baseball has stood against. And not only that, They've struck a real blow against the city of Atlanta, a majority minority city, 51% African American, and Major League Baseball has said those jobs, they can go jump in a lake. It is wrong, it's hypocritical, and it needs to stop. I have a question. Uh, there's a reporting that the White House is going to be uh, withdrawing all the from Afghanistan by. September 11th, I'm wondering for whoever would like to answer, um, if you just comment on that timeline. I want to add uh, uh, to something my colleagues just mentioned by noting that I don't have the ability to peer into any conversations that may have occurred within the leadership of Major League ba Baseball. I don't know whether this was exclusively a decision on their part. Uh, to do a favor to the Democratic Party, to help assist in the passage of, of the Illegal Voting Act, H.R. 1, uh, or, or whether it was simply a business decision. Perhaps they had entered into a contract and made arrangements for Atlanta and decided that um, Denver would be more economically advantageous for them, and then they used this as pretext for it. Maybe they had some other reason. I don't know. My point is, there are a lot of possibilities as to what subjectively motivated them. But they did make this decision, and it's a decision you wouldn't see from an entity that wasn't insulated from market competition by our antitrust laws. But that's why it's a problem. Uh, as far as Afghanistan withdrawal, I'm glad to see us moving out. I've got a daughter who was an infant when that war started. She's now halfway through college. I want to see us get out of there. And uh, a, a timely withdrawal seems like a good thing to me. Thank you, guys. Thank you.